Welcome everybody. This is my lecture on logic or the trivia method. And uh, I want to start with a quote from Galileo Galilei. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. And uh, that's coming from a man who is willing to put his money where his mouth was and uh, go on trial and face execution. He wasn't executed, he was put under uh, arrest and then that was commuted to house arrest for the rest of his life. Uh, basically for the, uh, the uh, insistence on a single idea that, that the uh, earth moves around the sun and that the sun doesn't move around the earth. And uh, for that he was imprisoned. Not that people aren't in prison for much, uh, much, uh, just as ridiculous ideas as that nowadays. Like, for instance, a plant. The possession of a plant will, in some cases, get you arrested for 30 years. So there are people who were imprisoned for uh, possession of <laughs> plants and then, uh, you know, something else happened in prison, and uh, then they ended up being in prison for the rest of their life, or you know, most of the most of their adult life. I mean, when you consider an adult life, thirty years is you know a, a good chunk out of it. So, <sighs> all right, back to the notes. Uh, I actually wanted to start with another quote uh, and uh, a little bit from my notes from the Gene O'Denning interview, uh, which was something that was uh, that was part of the uh, assignment for the for the introductory um, part of the course. So I hope you watch that at some point. If not, still plenty of time. So this is a quote from Jan Irving. It is only when information is occulted that the appearance of the truth can be disfigured. It is in this intellectual corruption that humans can be tricked into dehumanizing and thus rationalizing the use of force, fraud, and coercion against other humans in our own communities. thought that uh, kind of set the, the, the groundwork for this, um, that, you know, our, um, our inherent ability to reason was uh, evolved over millennia from, from our ability for uh, from our, our inherent uh, autonomy as individuals that, you know, um, before any sort of cultural institutions existed, uh, the tribe, the clan, um, you know, there was family units. And that the, the authority of the parents, the elders in the family was something that was uh, not always present, and it wasn't really enforced uh, on a in a consistent way on a on a regular basis, and um, so humans, young humans, had to develop their own sense of uh, reason, their own ability to identify uh, a plant, an animal, to know poison from uh, good nutrition and uh, you know right from wrong and uh, night from day and uh, <laughs> all of the other uh, 
dichotomies of life that, that are important to recognize. And um, that it's that, that inherent reason uh, that was developed outside of institutions that is now being uh, deliberately bred out of humans by those institutions in order to make them easier to control, to make them basically human cattle. And uh, one of the ways that that's really being done is through education. And uh, it's the reason that these things aren't taught, that logic and reasoning and grammar aren't, aren't especially taught, you know. Um, grammar, for instance, is taught as, as how to spell things correctly. And that's, that's a, a very uh, passive form of literacy where it's, it's just, um, just obedience to authority. It's, you know, you spell it this way because we say that's how it's spelled. That, that's, <laughs> that's really all there is to it. Um, and to not understand the development of how that word became to be that word and, and the understanding that it really wasn't that long ago from a historical perspective that there was no such thing as proper spelling of a word in English, you know? You could spell a word any way you wanted and the other person would or would not interpret that the way that they wanted. And, uh, you know, there's there's some something to be gained from from uh, a person's perspective in in spelling something a certain way, but but uh, to teach people that that only uh, one way is correct and not ever explain why that's the case or that it was ever any different than that or anything is just very limiting. It's very it's very passive. You, you just do what you're told and you don't understand why you're doing that, the way that you're doing it. And um, that gets into this uh, Gino Denning quote here, or it's not really a quote, it's my notes, so I'm not sure how much of this he said directly or if I might have uh, added a bit of my own nuance to this. Um, but I'll read to you from my notes. The state of modern education is such that children are taught to be literate in the barest sense of the word. The identity and definition they are given are stripped of context, that of etymology and that of historical meaning. The active literacy is not just being able to read, but the ability to evaluate information using grammar and logic, then being able to express what we've learned to others in both our speech and our writing. If you cannot do this, then your literacy is passive, and it is likely that you will be manipulated both mentally and emotionally by the rhetoric of those whose literacy is fully developed and thus active. So that's, that's the heart of uh, Trivia Method right there, is forming an active sense of literacy, understanding uh, the law of identity and having context for why the law of identity applies to a certain thing, you know? And it's not just that chair is a chair, but it, it gets a lot deeper in the sense of, uh, you know, is an authority an authority? Why are they an authority? Is it just because they say so? Or is, is there some reason for that? And uh, that gets me into reasoning. Reasoning is, uh, logic is sort of just a, a way of, of double checking your reasoning. You know, reasoning is inherent. Reasoning is, is just uh, basically the law of identity uh, based on your own observation your five senses, plus uh, some others, depending on how you look at that. Um, so, 
logic then is basically just a way, it's a, it's a kind of mathematical system and that's, uh, that's how it's been applied in formal logic, you know, as an actual mathematical system that, that has created its own kind of, it has had its own language created for it um, in terms of its symbol system. And uh, that's basically, uh, you know, it's a, it's a kind of if-then system. Um, you know, if A is A, then B is B, or whatever the case may be. So it's, it's, a, it's a type of verification. And um, it, it's really very simple, you know. It's uh, common sense. <laughs> it really is. It's very common sense. You know, there's, you hear people say that uh, common sense is dead these days. And this is why. This is why common sense is, is a rare thing to find in people. It, because common sense is this. It, it is this basic ability to, to reason and verify your own reasoning. To understand why you know what you know. And then to be able to speak it, which is rhetoric, which is an even rarer skill to find someone that can really talk about not just that they know something, you know, plenty of people can repeat what they've read from a book or heard from someone else or even observe themselves. But they, they, you very rarely talk to someone who, who doesn't just then repeat that as a belief system and, and talks about how they verified it and, and how they understand that and, and how they developed the theory that they have about it based on the information that was conveyed to them or that they observed. And, um, yeah, it, this, this um, system to me is valuable uh, because it, it, it is what we already do inherently and it's, it, it wouldn't even be necessary for me to um, explain this. It, it seems kind of silly to explain, but our entire um, educational system, we spend 12 years unlearning our own ability to reason. And, um, you know, it, it there are teachers who are very much um, in opposition to that and, and try their best to uh, implement those things into their curriculum. You know, I'm not denouncing all teachers by saying this. There's, there's really, really good teachers out there who try their best to subvert that system of, of obedience and, you know, bells and... Uh, class assignments, uh, seating assignments, and, you know, um, uh, districting in schools so that, you know, there's good schools for the rich white kids and, you know, crappy schools for everybody else. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a, and it's not just rich white kids, it's just rich kids, you know. I mean, a lot of times that's the white kids, but, you know, it's, it's not the, the class structure uh, in, in America and, and from what I gather most other countries are pretty much this way now too it's you know if, if uh, people of other races will will uh, submit and play ball and do what they're told then then they're allowed in to uh, you know the the hallways of privilege as well but you know it's that's really what it's about is is will you do what you're told and not question. And if the answer is yes, then come on in. If the answer is no, then you're excluded. And this is why um, this this uh, system of, of logic and uh, of of reasoning is not taught because if you don't want someone to question, you're not going to teach them a comprehensive system of questioning 
of understanding of, of uh,